So in the previous video, we derived the law of sines and we identified that the law of sines was going to be a tool for solving oblique or non-right triangles. And in this video, what we want to do is push that a little further and identify exactly which oblique triangles can we solve using the law of sines and we want to identify any pitfalls or ambiguous cases that show up in the use of the law of sines. So the law of sines, which is right here, the idea is that you're going to select from the, from the law of sines any two of the possible combinations of ratios and you're going to use those ratios to solve for a missing, uh, a missing side or a missing angle. So you have three ratios, one, two, three. You pick two, you pick two, and then you use that ratio that you've selected to solve for a missing piece of a triangle. So what you can see is what you're going to need to know to use the law of sines is you're going to need to know either the measure of two angles and the side that's opposite an angle. So that would mean three pieces of information. You need to know three pieces of information. I need to know an angle, an angle, and a side opposite an angle. And if you know that, then you can solve for the missing side length. And the other possibility is you might know an angle and the side opposite the angle and another side. So you might know these three pieces of information. And then you can use those three piece of it, pieces of information with the ratio that you have to solve for a missing angle. So you always need to know three things about the triangle. You either need to know two angles and a side or two sides and an angle in order to use the law of sines. So the, the first way that you could have three measurement pieces of information about a triangle would just to be to know the length of three sides, A, B, and C, oh, right? Because our tradition is we label the angles with the capital letters and then we label the sides opposite those angles with lowercase letters that match. So I could know the measure of the three sides but not be told anything about the angles. But if I did that, I would know pieces of information that wouldn't give me, wouldn't give me the ability to extract one of these sets of ratios and know three pieces of information. The, if I know the side lengths A, B, C, they're scattered across all three ratios. So no matter which two I pick, so for example, if I try picking this, these two ratios, to get this equality right here, I would only know two of the three pieces. I would only know two of the three pieces. I would only know two of the three pieces of information that I need in order to come up with a solution. So if I have a triangle for which I know uh, the length of the three sides, which is called a side, side, side triangle, I know three side lengths, I can't use the law of sines to solve that triangle. I'm going to need another tool, which we'll develop later. So, the, so what a possibility is, so if we focus in on this first ratio, one possibility is that I know the measure of angle A and I know the measure of angle B. So if I know A and I know B and I'm not told what C is and I'm told the measure of one of the side lengths either opposite A or B. So let's say I'm told the measure of A, but I don't know B and I don't know C. So this is an angle, angle, side. This would be an angle, angle, side triangle. Angle, angle, side actually corresponding to this. If I know the angle, the angle, and the side, then I have a situation where I can use the law of sines because I know three of the four pieces of information from a ratio. What we want to notice is that we want to notice this. We want to notice if we know two of the angles. If I know the measure of A and B, I actually know the measure of angle C because the sum of the angles of a triangle have to add up to 180. I can just take 180 degrees minus the sum of A plus B and that will be the measure of C. So anytime I know two angles, I know the angle C. And so notice if I knew angle, angle, side, I also know angle, side, angle this situation because if I know A that means I must know C which is an angle side 
angle situation. So it turns out that angle side angle is equivalent to knowing angle angle side would be equivalent to knowing a side and two angles. That would just mean read it the other direction, know an angle, uh, sorry, a side and two angles. So anytime you have the measure of two angles, you know the measure of all three, and if you know one of the side lengths, the law of sines can be used to set up a ratio that gives you a solution. So another way that you can know information about a triangle is to get information about side angle side. So let's say I know the measure of the length of this side B that's opposite angle B, and I know the measure of angle A, so side angle side, this side would be opposite angle C. If I know these pieces of information, the question is can I use the law of sines to solve it? And the answer is going to be no. If I have a triangle in this situation, just like with side, 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 I can't use the law of sines. And let's see why. So if I know the measure of angle B, uh, sorry, side length B and side length C, I need to know the measure of either angle C or angle B. And notice if I only know the measure of angle A, I don't have enough information to get the sizes of those two angles. If I take any of the relationships that have angle A in them, here and here, notice I have to know the side opposite A but knowing two side lengths doesn't tell me what the third side length is. So side angle side, it turns out, isn't solvable using the law of sines. If I know two angles and a side, I can do it. But if I know two sides and an angle, I may or may not be able to. So let's look at the angle side side or the ass situation. Suppose I know the measure of an angle A. So there it is. And I know the next side, oh, I know the measure of the side adjacent A, so angle side adjacent A, so this is little c, and I know the measure of the next side over, so regardless which way I go, angle side side, or angle, I know this side side, angle side side, I'm going to wind up over here for the second side, and that's going to be little a. So if I have angle side side information, angle side side notice that gives me the measure of a and the side opposite a and I know this side here which means I need I know three of the four pieces of information I can solve for angle C so the two types of triangles that we can solve using law of sines we can solve angle side angle triangles which are the same as angle angle side triangles and we can solve angle side side triangles and so what we want to do is kind of look at the geometry of these two types of triangles and see that the angle side side actually generates a problem for us. So unfortunately I didn't set this up ahead of time so we're going to take the grid and the axes and turn those off. So first let's look at first let's look at the case where we know angle side angle and let's look at the geometry of that so angle side angle means I know the measure of an angle so I'm gonna make a ray right here so I don't know the length of this side but here's a ray and from that ray I can form an angle if I know what the angle is I could use for example a protractor and draw this angle in and have it exactly the size that I want let me turn off options, labeling, don't stop labeling objects, there we go. And then the pen tool is going to fight with me of course. So if I know angle, that means hey I know the measure of an angle, I know the length of the side next to the angle which means this is going to be little c because our triangle labeling convention is hey let's do a B, C, so this is going to be little a, little b, little c. So if I know an angle, I know it. That means this side here, I don't know his length. So I just do a ray because I don't know that length. But I do know the length of this line segment. And if I do know this other angle, then I'm in pretty good shape. I'm not in good shape when I'm not in good shape when things don't move on the screen the way I need them to move though. So if I know this angle, I know this side, and I know the other angle, so I'm going to make another ray 
right here, make a ray going somewhere. So I know this angle. Here's here's my right here is my angle B. So I know angle side angle, which means I don't know the length of this side. I don't know the length of this side. So I just represent the unknown lengths using rays. The key is to notice that these two rays have to intersect in a point. Right? They intersect in a point right here. And regardless the angle that we have, I get a triangle. In fact, what I get is a single triangle that can be constructed using the intersection of these two rays. So anytime I know angle, side, angle, I'm going to get a single triangle as the result. The, the triangle I get is going to be unique regardless Regardless the angle that I put here, I'm going to have a single intersection of two rays. So it turns out if we are in the situation where instead of knowing angle side angle, we know angle side side, the ass situation, that things are much more complicated and we may or may not get solutions and we may get more than one possible triangle that comes out of it. So let's, let's look at angle side side. So angle side side would mean that I know the angle right here. If I know the angle, I know where to put this line segment. And I know the length of this line segment. And so angle side side means I know the angle, I know the side, and I know the next side length. Those are things that I know. So I know, so put the labeling, I know the measure of this angle. I know the length of this side, and this would be the side opposite angle C. And that didn't that didn't write so well. Let's try that again. I know angle side, and this side is going to be opposite angle A. So this is going to be side length A. So I know the angle, I know the side, I know the side. I don't know the length of this side, so I just use a ray to represent it. And the idea is that where's the, there it is right there let's make a circle on here the idea is that the triangle that i form doing angle side side the triangle that i form is going to have to have a side that lands somewhere on this circle of radius side length a i don't know the angle so this angle can be anything anything that adds up to with the other angles that get formed that adds up to 180, but I don't know the angle. So the issue is if this second side length I'm given is too short, notice I can't even form a triangle because I don't intersect this ray. In fact, the first triangle that I get, the side length A, this radius A, I have to make it big enough for the circle of radius A to intersect the ray formed by this angle. And the first time that I get a triangle is when this circle is just tangent to this ray. In fact, what I get is a 90 degree triangle that I could actually solve using right angle trigonometry. If I make side length A any bigger now, notice what happens. Oh, I get two intersections of this circle with this ray, which means there are one, two possible triangles that I can form. Let me turn that guy off. So I can form a triangle right here. Here's angle, side, side. This has length A because it's on a triangle of radius, uh, uh, sorry, it's on a circle of radius A. So here's one possible triangle. And this angle, this angle up here would actually be my angle C. This would be my angle C right here. Or, or we get another possible triangle right here by connecting this intersection on that circle to the midpoint of the circle. And we get the possibility that we have an obtuse angle C right here. So I get two possible triangles, this guy right here, this guy right here, both of which have angle side length C, side length A. So this is the ambiguous case. This is the case where if the second side length is 
long enough so that the circle of radius side length a intersects the ray formed by this angle in two places, I get two possible triangles. And we could, we could kind of continue this exploration a little bit by making the side length A right here even bigger. And notice what happens is if I make the second side length too big, so this is my angle A right here, this is my length C, this is my length A, if I make it big enough, I actually wind up with just a single, here's my angle C, a single triangle again. And notice that when this happens when this side length A is bigger than the side length C. So if, if the side opposite the angle that you know is greater than the side adjacent A, you wind up getting just a single triangle again. So bottom line is, what the, the takeaway is from this really long-winded video is that if you're in the situation where you know the angle and the adjacent side and the side opposite that angle, then there are multiple things that could happen. You could get no triangle at all if the second side is too short. If the second side is just the right size, you get a right triangle. If it's just a little bigger than that, you get two possible triangles. And then if you make the second side bigger than the first side, you get back into a situation like this where once again there's only one solution. So angle side side is the ambiguous case because the geometry of knowing an angle in two sides differs depending on the length of that second side.